Hi, I'm Matt and this is Collaboration Coach. In this video, we're gonna look at how to add a loop component to a Teams chat. Loop components are little collaboration objects that we can add to Microsoft 365 apps. I'm gonna add a loop table to a chat. I'm gonna get my team to update it in real time and show you some other ways to use and share it. So let's take a look. First of all, I'm gonna add the table to a chat. Now I want to share this table with my teammate Polly. So I open a chat with Polly in Teams and I go down to the toolbar here and choose the loop icon. This menu pops up and I can choose the component that I need to use. And you can see there are lists or I could add a paragraph of text, but I'm going to choose a table. And I'll set this to three columns by three rows in size. And now I can see my table. I can give the table a title and I'm gonna call mine Team Roster. And the headers are going to be name, role, and location. I'll add me in there for starters. Notice you can move the columns around by dragging and I can add more columns and rows if I need to. Now, before I post this, I want to configure who can edit it. Right now you can see here that it says, people in my organization can edit. I want to restrict that for now, so that only people in this chat can edit. To do that, I'll choose the drop down here, and you can see I've got the standard options for sharing in Microsoft 365. You can share a loop component just like it was a normal file. I'm going to choose people currently in this chat and then apply. So now it's just Polly that can update it. And now I'm ready to post it. Once it's posted, you can see it changed the name of the table to Team Roster. It also shows me who has access to the table. For now, that's just me and Polly. I can copy a link to the table to my clipboard with this button. Now the table can be seen by Polly and she can update it. She adds a couple of lines to the table and as she does, I can see her presence and where she's making the changes to the table. So Polly and I are planning a webinar together and as well as the team roster table, I also want to add the webinar agenda to this loop. To add more, I just pick a line and I'm gonna add it just under the table here and then I type a forward slash. Now that pulls up a menu where I can choose my component from. I can also just start typing the name of the component if I know it. So if I start typing agenda, it will filter the list for me and I can just press return to choose it. In the agenda, I'm going to type the item, which is introduction, and then an at sign. And this will allow me to start typing the name of the person who's going to deliver that introduction. And that's me, and I'll add five minutes for that. Now, whenever you at mention someone and choose them, that activates the text or the name. So you can roll over and you'll see a little card so you can tell who they are. The next item is demo, which will be presented by Polly for 10 minutes. Polly can add that because she's seeing the agenda two and updating in real time. So you can see that this loop is becoming more useful because we're adding more components to it. This loop can also be viewed as a page in a browser. This gives you a little bit more space to work in and some more sharing options. To open the loop as a page, all I need to do is press on the title here. That pops open a browser and now I'm looking at the loop on a page. And now I'm in page view, I can change the file name up here if I want to. At the top of the page, I'm gonna add a title. I'm also gonna add a date beneath it, which is the day the webinar is scheduled for. And I do that in the same way as I did when I was in Teams. And if I switch back to Teams, you can see that all the updates have been synced. When I'm in page view, I can share it. If I press the share button up here, I get the standard page sharing options. I can create a link for individuals or groups, and I can choose whether they can edit or view the page. Then it will send the link to the page by email. 
or I can copy a link myself and then share that in a chat. Anyone who has the link can edit the page in the browser with me. Here I can review who already has access to the page. And I can remove anyone who I don't want to have access anymore. Any loop pages that I create in Teams in this way get saved into my OneDrive. They show up in the Microsoft Teams chat files folder. And from here, I can open them up and manage them just like a normal file. They will also show up on the office.com homepage under the quick access section here. Okay, so that's how you can use loop components to build interactive pages and share them with your team. I hope that's useful. And if you like the video, then please like it and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.